I'm getting myself together. I decided it was time to get outside and get some fresh air. Um, I've been thinking about doing a uh, day trip in the van, just something to get it out. And it occurred to me that I have something even better for those day trips right out here in the garage. Hey everyone, it's Maury. We're gonna go on a little afternoon drive today. We'll swing by an old uh, mining ghost town and then we'll probably go by Canyon Lake and see some water. End up in Tortilla Flat and maybe even find some campsites for future reference. So, uh, well, without further ado, let's go. So, I haven't been to Tortilla Flat since not long after my surgery. Um, I drove up there, or I would go up there on my motorcycle. The road on the way in is a kind of a windy mountain road. It's a lot of fun in, on a motorcycle or in a sports car. But today, we're gonna take the Jeep and do some exploring. So Tortilla Flat itself is just kind of a neat place to go. They have a nice restaurant and stuff, and I'm pretty sure they're open. There's some things to see along the way as well. Anyway, I've gotta put the camera down now since I'm pulling out of the neighborhood, and I will see you along the way. There's my little co-pilot. He's keeping an eye on me. Our first stop is Goldfield, established in 1893. It's an old mining establishment, I guess. Looks like there's people. I don't know what they have going on today, but we will find out. The last time I was here was on my motorcycle, so I didn't actually go in. I didn't want to leave it parked in a dirt lot but there's plenty of parking so let's pick a spot and go in and see what's going on it's a neat old oil rig there I don't know what any of this equipment is but I guess we'll learn as we go excited about going in. I forgot my mask. I had to go back to the Jeep to get it. So let's try this again. This is an authentic 1890s ghost town site. Look at the size of this cactus. Apparently this sign says no leaping up hills strictly forbidden. There's always an abundance of RVs out in the desert out here. Lots of wild camping and boondocking and whatnot.
Oh, that's where I need to go. Jail. Oh, they have a hangman's gallows too. Man, my sunglasses keep getting fogged up from my mask. Everyone's all kind of that was a good point. Somebody I just walked by said everyone's just kind of standing around. And now that I look, that's entirely true. Interesting. It's a neat little place though. I didn't notice this before, but they allow camping. Dry camping, $20 a night. Hookup sites, $30 a night. No generators after nine o'clock. So that's kind of neat. Just have to check in before you pick a spot. Might be kind of cool to stay out here sometime. So I just wanted to make a quick stop here. We're gonna continue on our way. Crossing the street here might be tricky. It gets pretty busy on the way. So there's Canyon Lake in between here and where we're going. So we might stop there also. Oh, winding roads. We bypassed Canyon Lake in favor of just coming straight to Tortilla Flats or Tortilla Flat. There's some live music going on and some spotty mask wearing going on. It's a very popular place for motorcyclists. As you can see off in the distance there, there's a whole row of them. The winding road has a lot to do with that. You know, I rode mine up here a number of times and it's just fun to hit the windy road and have the wind in your face or on your helmet. Riders. I don't mind being alone, and frankly, in a lot of cases, I prefer it. But for something like this, it's a lot more fun to have a group of people to sit with and chat. Oh, there's a revel. All right. So go back to the Jeep, we'll go this way for a little while. They have it closed for some reason, a ways in, but we can go in and maybe find a trail or something. Can't do this in the Rialta. This is all dispersed camping, so you could come out here if you had a, well, like that Rebel that we saw a little while ago. This would be pretty nasty after a rain, though. So I am out in dispersed wild camping, not too far from Tortilla Flat, and I'm going to have to pin this because um, this is an awesome place to camp. Um, so where I'm at right now is fairly flat. There's some rocks, but there are places to park, places to pitch a tent if you wanted to. And then if you go a little further, here let's turn this around. 
I could make this in the Jeep, go down right here, crawl down these rocks, and there's a little bit of privacy and some shelter from the elements, the wind and stuff. This is all rock, but it's very flat. And I mean, this would just be an amazing place to set up camp, whether you're by yourself or with some of your friends. Yeah, just look at this. This is a, this is a great little spot. What do we have down here? I see some color on the wall. Oh, this is, uh, this goes underneath the road. So you probably would not want to be down here during a flash flood. But otherwise, this is really cool. There's the Jeep up there watching over us. So the road goes up here. This goes underneath the, the road that we were just on. This is a really great camping spot. I'm gonna have to mark this and maybe come back sometime. Plenty of opportunity to go hiking or climbing a little bit. I don't know what's on the other side of the road, but it's pretty easy to get to from down here. The sand is soft enough that you could set up a nice tent, put up some rocks. I don't know what the rules are for fires out here, but it would still be a nice place to to set up or you know if you have a barbecue or something you could do that here too. I enjoy getting out and uh, just into the wilderness a little bit. I actually grew up in the middle of nowhere Oklahoma so I spent most of my childhood outdoors. Um, more recently as an adult, I have a little better appreciation for the outdoors and Mother Nature in general. I'm not big on, you know, survivalist camping or anything like that. I'm kind of a hybrid between a city boy and a country boy. Um, I like being outdoors, but I like to have some creature comforts also. Sky is so blue today. Yeah, so this is definitely a great place to come. Not much in the way of shade, but that's probably okay. Depending on the time of year, I mean, you wouldn't want to be out here in August. That's the one thing about Arizona, though. You know, we have not only do we have lots of places to camp or to just go, um, but the diversity, oh, there's a fire right there. The diversity of the state itself is such that, you know, a hour, hour and a half drive and you're in a completely different climate, essentially. From here, if you go north about 90 minutes or so, you're in Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Prescott, um, and there's usually a 15 to 25 degree differential between the temperature there and the temperature down here in the valley. There was one day that I was out and it was raining. I was up in Prescott and it was raining and it was 50 degrees and I got to Phoenix and it was over 100. So over a 50 degree differential between 
you know, a hundred miles or so. Pretty crazy. Well, I'm gonna jump back in the Jeep and head back up this trail. It wasn't very rough. Um, there was a couple of spots that you wouldn't want to take just a regular vehicle, like a, a sedan or anything like that. But you could make it to this spot for sure if you had a truck camper or a Revel, you know, something with ground clearance. But, but we're gonna go back that way now. And that's toward um, Tortilla Flat where we just came from. Just a side note, as we head out of here, um, if it matters to you when you're out like this, there is absolutely no cell signal right here. Um, probably in part due to being surrounded by the rocks, but it's not uncommon to be out in the boondocks and not have service at all. So just something to be aware of if you're in a vehicle that maybe isn't quite as reliable um, that's something you just want to pay attention to. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. That was a nice way to spend the afternoon. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I will see you next time around. Until then, have a great day.